Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this short podcast, we shall be looking at decisions that affect pricing, including those to maximize profit, incremental analysis on special orders, cost plus pricing, and analysis for customer profitability. Economics puts forward a theory that the quantity of any good that is demanded is related to the price of the good. The higher the price, then the less the demand, and the lower the price, the greater the demand becomes. How then can we determine an optimal price? And what do we mean by an optimal price? Again, in economics, an optimal price is considered to be that which will produce the sales revenue that yields maximum profit. To see how this might work, we consider how we arrive at figures for profit. The price charged, less the variable costs, is equal to the contribution margin. The total contribution margin will be the contribution margin multiplied by the quantity of goods sold. Subtracting fixed costs from the total contribution margin gives the profit. For managers, the question then becomes that of making the estimate of demand for a product. This can be done in several ways. Sales managers can estimate the quantities of a good that they may believe will sell at various prices. The market can be sampled using a test product and having variable prices or may be offered to potential customers at different prices. However, there is no magical formula that will indicate the quantity, and so the process is largely one of trial and error. Given the large investments that are often needed to introduce new products, we find some companies will choose cost plus pricing instead. The table shows the figures for profit maximization. When the unit price is very high, at $800, then the quantity demanded is low, only 1,800 units. This would actually produce a loss of $80,000. If the unit price were set at $500, then demand would be high, perhaps around 9,000 units, producing a profit of $100,000. However, This is not the unit price that would yield maximum profit. Selling at $650, the demand is 4,500 units, producing the maximum profit of $325,000. When a new product is being introduced, companies can use particular strategies as the product comes onto the market. Pompous products have a new video phone, the ICU-2 which they launch with an additional price of $700, but then reduce the price after three months to $300. The aim is to get maximum sales from early adapters, a segment of the market who will pay highly for the latest technology as soon as it is released. The strategy is frequently used with electronics, but can sometimes lead to a poor image if there is a large gulf between the initial price and the eventual price and particularly if the eventual price comes very soon after the initial high price offering. The process is called skimming the market. The opposite to skimming is to try and obtain maximum market penetration early, particularly where competition is strong. In this case, a product, a nimble e-reader, is sold at an initial price of $200. Once the product is established at this low price, then the price is raised to $260. Many brands of netbook and tablet PC were introduced in this way because competition was so strong. Many companies will produce their products and only sell under their own brand name. However, where there is spare capacity, they may be tempted to produce the same product for a third party. How do they determine whether this is worthwhile? The answer is to carry out incremental analysis. Banana drives have spare capacity and usually sell a particular model for $60 a drive. 
An offer comes from a company to purchase a thousand units at fifty-five dollars, to be installed in a housing that will carry the company's own label. How does Banana Drives take a decision? The first step will be to look at the cost per unit to produce the drives. The total cost of $47 per unit is made up of direct material, direct labour, variable overhead and fixed overhead. The fixed overhead is the key to understanding this analysis. The incremental revenue from selling an additional 1,000 units at $55 per unit is $55,000. The incremental costs are those for direct materials, direct labour and variable overhead. There is no additional fixed cost because the fixed cost has already been allocated. This means there would be a benefit or incremental profit of $22,000 if the company takes the decision to produce the drives and sell them in this way. The company may not always be willing to take a decision like this. Companies producing designer labels will often choose not to do this if they believe it will weaken their own brand label. What do we mean by cost plus pricing? Many companies use this as a simple way of determining a selling price. The procedure is to begin by estimating the costs of manufacturing the product. Selling and administrative costs are not taken into account for this purpose. A markup, usually as a percentage, is then made to obtain a desired level of profit. Banana drives intend to introduce a 200 gigabyte solid state drive where the demand is estimated at 10,000 units. The total of the fixed costs to be allocated is $780,000. This gives a fixed cost allocation per unit of $78. Variable costs per unit have been determined at $174, making a total cost of $250, sorry, $252 per unit. Banana Drives works on a desired profit achieved by a 40% markup. This is calculated as $100.80, making the projected selling price $352.80. If the estimate of demand rises, then the fixed cost per unit would fall, reducing the total cost and reducing the selling price. Companies that retail products often work on fixed percentage markups. A department store will often have a markup of around 50%, whilst a bargain or cut price store may only have a markup of around 20%. Remember that department stores are often having to pay greater overheads by renting premium space in shopping malls. An alternative way of looking at pricing is called target costing. This method recognizes that product features are important in driving the costs. Once a product is designed it may not be easy to alter many features. If a particular machine has to be made to produce the product then this equipment, once made or produced, becomes a sunk cost. The steps taken to achieve target costing are fairly straightforward. Competing products are looked at and their prices noted. There would be no point in introducing a product with similar features unless you can match or cut prices of competing products. From this the desired price and features are specified. The desired level of profit is determined. Finally the target price is determined. Banana Drives is considering introducing a 40 terabyte drive. The estimate of 5,000 sales has been determined, and the price with desired features has to be in the region of $370 to be competitive. With the required profit margin of 35%, then the target cost per unit is $240.50. If this cannot be achieved, then the process can become cyclical starting with a re-examining of the desired features and perhaps altering the specification slightly. The analysis of different customers is often not carried out by small businesses, yet the amount of profit that is related to different customers can differ and managerial accountants are becoming more aware of this. Goods have to be ordered, selected, packed and distributed to customers. 
These are all indirect costs. The procedure to compare customer profitability starts with identifying cost pools, then cost drivers. Once the annual quantity of events is known, then an allocation rate is calculated. Let us see how this might work. Pompous Products wishes to determine the allocation rates. The cost pools have been identified as online orders, other orders, picking, packing, shipping and returns. Looking at the previous year, the annual cost for each of these cost pools has been determined. The next step will be to determine the driver for each cost pool. For all the orders, the driver is identified as the number of orders the company has processed. The number of items picked is then selected. For packing, the weight of the order is selected since the cost is related to the weight. Since charges also relate to distance in shipping, then mileage is selected for shipping. Finally, the number of returns is selected as a driver. The quantities for each driver are now entered. Pompous Products is now aware of a number of features. There is a marked difference in the cost of processing an online order, which is low, and any other form of order, which is much higher. Each return also has a high cost. The weight of an order to be shipped out is also significant. Pompous Products now looks at their customers and carries out an analysis for profitability. We have selected two customers whose sales revenue to Pompous Products is almost identical. Honey Markets has a slightly higher sales revenue value to Pompous Products. The cost of goods sold is subtracted from the revenue. The number of online orders is looked at and the cost of these online orders is now allocated. The number of other orders is now entered and the cost allocation determined. We can see a clear difference here. Although sales revenue is the same, Honey Markets is presenting a larger number of orders to be processed, and they are almost always by mail or phone. The cost of processing these for pompous products is significantly higher than for bargain stores. The allocation for items and picked is then determined. The higher cost for Honey Markets may be related to the larger number of orders which, if they are all small orders, could result in more picking being required. The weight sent allocation is determined. The mileage allocation is determined. Then the allocation for number of returns. Here it is noted there are far more returns for honey markets. These differences all add up, and the customer profit for Honey Markets is around $2,000 lower, even though the sales revenue was slightly higher. Pompous Products determines to address this, solution, this problem. Pompous Products decides to make charges for these indirect costs and to include them when billing customers. To introduce a system like this might mean that prices of items are adjusted slightly then the costs are not as significant to the customer. The aim of Pompous Products will be to reduce the number of telephone or mail orders and encourage online orders by making the customers aware of the costs. In the same way it is hoped to reduce the cost of returns. Some companies have found that customers require all packaging to be labelled specially, including the cases the products are shipped in. Since this involves an additional cost in packaging, this charge is sometimes passed on. The aim is to reduce the cost so only those customers who actually use the cases for display will choose this option. This ends our podcast on pricing decisions. Brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. 
For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.